In this video we look at the FP3 work on reduction formulae. The specification simply says that we should be able to handle reduction formulae. And the work on reduction formulae basically is an extension of the work on method of in, uh, of the work on integration by parts. And using integration by parts, we establish a recurrence relation that will allow quite complex integrals to be evaluated. So, for example, if we've got the integral between 0 and 1 of x to the n, e to the x dx, using integration by parts, we can establish a formula linking i n to i n minus 1. And having got that recurrence relationship, we can then evaluate relatively easily i4, the integral between 0 and 1 of x to the 4, e to the x dx. So let's ha now have a look at two examination examples. The first one comes from the 2008 FP3 paper, and we're looking at the i n being the integral between 1 and 2 of x times ln of x to the n dx. So, using integration by parts then, it is easy to integrate the x, it's not at all easy to integrate ln x to the n, so we'll start off by integrating the x and leaving the ln x to the n alone, and then subtracting the integral of a half x squared times by the derivative of the ln x to the n. And differentiating ln x to the n just requires the chain rule. So, if we start by looking at this part, the right-hand side, putting x equals 2 in, we've got a half of 4 is 2 times ln 2 to the n. And when we put x equals 1 in, we've got ln of 1, which is 0, so the whole expression is going to be 0. So, we've got 2 times ln 2 to the n, take away 0. Looking at this part here, We've got half x squared times 1 over x simplifies to a half x. The half can come outside the integral. So we've got x times n times ln x to the n minus 1. So we can pull the n outside the integral as well. And we then notice that the integral that we've got here is precisely i n minus 1. So we've now established the recurrence relationship i n equals two lots of ln 2 to the n take away n over 2 i n minus 1 as required. Second part of the question then asks us to evaluate i 2 so if we use the recurrence relationship here with n equals 2, we obtain i2 is 2 ln 2 squared, take away 2 over 2 lots of i1, which of course is just 2 ln 2 squared, take away i1. But we can now use the recurrence relationship again but with n equals 1 in. So we can say that i1 is the same thing as 2 lots of ln 2 to the power 1, take away a half of i0. So we've got i2 must be 2 ln 2 squared, take away 2 ln 2 plus a half i0. But i0 is quite easy to work out because i0 is the integral between 1 and 2 of x times ln x to the 0 dx. Ln x to the 0 is just 1. Anything to the power 0 is 1. So all we've got is the integral between 1 and 2 of x dx. Integrate half x squared between 1 and 2, which gives me 3 over 2. So what we have got now then is that i2 
must be 2 ln 2 squared, take away 2 ln 2, plus 3 quarters. We're asked to give the answer correct to three decimal places, so evaluating that gives me 0 0.325 to three decimal places. The mark scheme for this question gives two marks for the initial split up of the integral of x ln x to the power of n using integration by parts. So realising that you are going to integrate the x and differentiate the ln x to the power n term. There are then two more marks for carrying that integration by parts through correctly. And a final mark for convincingly obtaining the reduction formula. For part b, the initial mark was for using the reduction formula for n equals 2 to obtain this part. Second mark then for using the reduction formula again to deal with I1. A third mark for evaluating I0. A fourth mark then for obtaining a correct expression for I2. And the final mark for giving that value correct to three decimal places. Our second example comes from the 2010 paper and looks at the integral between 0 and pi by 2 of cos x to the power n dx. So we'll start off by trying to set up the recurrence relation. So we've got i n is cos x to the power n, the integral of cos x to the power n dx. And of course, cos x to the power n, we can split as being cos x times by cos x to the n minus 1. We're going to integrate the cos x and differentiate the cos x to the n minus 1. So integrating the cos x gives me sin x. We leave the cos x to the n minus 1 alone in the first part of the integration by parts. And then in the second part, we've got the sine x times by the derivative of the cos to the n minus 1x, which can be found relatively easily using differentiation, the chain rule for differentiation. So derivative of cos x to the n minus 1 is going to be minus sine x times by n minus 1 lots of cos x to the n minus 2. Putting the limits in to begin with, if x is pi by 2, cos x to the n minus 1 is going to be 0, because we know that n is greater than or equal to 2, so n minus 1 is at least 1, so cos of pi by 2 is 0, so we certainly know that cos to the n minus 1 of pi by 2 is going to be 0. When we put x equals 0 in, we've got sine 0 is 0, so we've got 0 in that case as well. So this part here is going to give us nothing at all. Looking at the right-hand side here, we need to be careful with the signs. We've got a minus, a minus, so that's going to give me a plus overall. We can pull the n minus 1 out, because it's a constant term. And we have got left sine x times sine x, so that's sine squared x times cos to the n minus 2x dx. Now this looks to be taking us a long way away from I n, but if we simply remember that sine squared x is the same thing as 1 minus cos squared x, we can write that, which is much more promising because we've got everything back in terms of cosines. Multiplying the brackets out, we've got n minus 1, lots of the integral between 0 and pi by 2 of cos to the n minus 2 x dx, take away the integral of cos x to the n dx. 
This first integral here is precisely i n minus 2, and this second integral is i n again. So I have got that i n equals n minus 1 times i n minus 2, take away n minus 1 lots of i n. If we move this term onto the left hand side, we're going to have i n plus n minus 1 lots of i n equals n minus 1 i n minus 2. In other words, we've got n lots of i n must equal n minus 1 lots of i n minus 2. Divide through by n, we have the required recurrence relation. Moving on to part b then, first of all we're being asked to work out what i4 is. Well, using the recurrence relation here, with n equals 4, we can say that i4 is 3 over 4 times i2. Using the recurrence relationship again, with n equals 2, we can say that that's the same thing as 3 over 4 times by a half of i0. So we've got the recurrence relation there says that i2 must be 1 over 2 times i0. So we simply need to evaluate what i0 is. Well, i0 is the integral between 0 and pi by 2 of cos x to the power 0 dx. Anything to the power 0 is just 1. So we've got the integral between 0 and pi by 2 of 1. That integrates up to x between 0 and pi by 2. So that's pi by 2, take away 0, which is simply pi by 2. So we have got that i4 must be 3 eighths of pi by 2. So that is 3 pi by 16. For part 2, we've got the integral between 0 and pi by 2 of cos x to the power 5 times sine x to the power 2. Well, sine squared x is the same thing as 1 minus cos squared x. So what we've got there is the integral between 0 and pi by 2 of cos x to the 5 times by 1 minus cos x squared. So that's the same thing as the integral between 0 and pi by 2 of cos, to the, cos x to the power 5. Take away the integral between 0 and pi by 2 of cos x to the power 7. In other words, we've got i5 take away i7. Using the formula here with n equals 7, we can say that i7 is 6 over 7 times i5. So we've got i5 take away 6 sevenths of i5, so that's certainly 1 seventh of i5. Using the formula now, with n equals 5, we've got i5 equals 4 over 5 times i3. Using the formula again, with n equals 3, I've got i3 is 2 over 3 times i1. Now I can't use the formula anymore because that recurrence formula is only valid for n is greater than or equal to 2. However, i1 is relatively easy to work out. i1 is simply the integral between 0 and pi by 2 of cos x. Cos x integrates give us sine x. Put the limits in, we find out that i1 is simply 1. So at the end of all of this, we can say that the required integral here, which is 8 over 105 times i1, is going to be 8 over 105 times by 1, which just gives me 8 over 105. Okay, so if you look at the mark scheme for this, 
First mark basically was realising that we needed to rewrite the cos x to the power n as cos x times by cos x to the n minus 1 and then carrying through the integration by parts gave us the second mark. Realising that we needed to write the sine squared x as 1 minus cos squared x then gave us the next mark oh, in fact it gave us the next two marks and finally establishing the formula there gave us the final mark the final of the five marks for the first part of the question for part B the first part of part B we had a method mark for using the recurrence relationship with n equals 4 and then again with n equals 2 so obtaining the result i4 equals 3 eighths of i0 and then we simply had to evaluate i0 and obtain the final answer to gain a total of three marks for the first part of B. For the second part of B, the first thing we needed to do was realise that this integral here was I5 take away I7. That gave us that gave me my first two marks. Simplifying that then would give me the third mark and then pushing through the recurrence for formula to move from I5 to I3 to I1 would be another mark. Finding the value of I1 gave me the final mark. So that's giving me a total of five marks for part two there.